Hi everybody, some chief here. Today we're looking at polynomial long division. We're going to find the partial fraction expansion of 3x cubed plus 11x squared minus 9x minus 15 divided by x squared plus 3x minus 4. And we're also going to show you how to program that into LaTeX to get PDF output that present, present your mathematical question in a nice, uh, neat fashion. So straight away we can see our denominator is x squared and our numerator is 3x cubed. They're the, the uh, dominant terms in our fraction here. So as the denominator is of a lower term than the numerator, we can go straight into polynomial long division. So we get the denominator, x squared plus 3x minus 4. We're going to divide that into our numerator, which is 3x cubed plus 11x squared minus 9x minus 15. And the way to do this is, first of all, you're only interested in the 3x cubed and then in the x squared. So what you want to do is 3x cubed divided by x squared. What will that give us? Well, that will give us 3x. So we'll put our 3x at the top of the fraction here where we're working out the quotient. So good idea to put the 3x in line with all the other x's. So our minus 9x, put it in line with that. And then once we've got that first term, all we do now is get that 3x and multiply it by the x squared plus 3x minus 4. So 3x times x squared is 3x squared. 3x times plus 3x is 9x. And 3x times minus 4 is minus 12x. But you notice here I've got minus 3x cubed, minus 9x squared, plus 12x. So all these signs have flipped. Because what we're going to do is we're then going to subtract this uh, our solution here when we multiply by 3x by the original uh, polynomial. So instead of writing minus and then 3x cubed minus plus 9x squared minus minus 12x, I just flip the signs and it's just easier. We just need to concentrate on that a little bit and give it a bit of time just to make sure we don't uh, get it wrong, otherwise later on you're going to come into trouble. So 3x cubed minus 3x cubed, 0. Very important that this first one cancels out, otherwise you've not done this calculation correctly. Then we've got 11x squared minus 9x squared is 2x squared. 3x uh, obviously is in here. There's 3x there. And then uh, minus 9x plus 12x is, is plus 3x. And then the minus 15, we just bring it down and put it in line with our solution there. Okay, so now we go back to our uh, long division calculations. And then we just take the x squared and the 2x squared. So now the 2x squared divided by x squared is just 2. So that's that sorted. So now what we do now, this plus 2, multiply it by the x squared plus 3x minus 4. So 2 times x squared is 2x squared. Flip the sign to minus 2x squared. 2 times plus 3x is plus 6x. Flip the sign to minus 6x. And plus 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. Flip the sign. So Go along now, solve all these along in the in the line. 2x squared minus 2x squared, cancelled. 3x minus 6x is minus 3x, and minus 15 plus 8 is minus 7. So now what we find is this minus 3x is of a lower degree than the x squared. So that brings us to the end of the polynomial long division. So our quotient is 3x plus 2, and our remainder is minus 3x minus 7. So I've written that here. Scroll along. So now what we find is our original question here is equal to 3x plus 2, which is our quotient, and our remainder, which is minus 3x plus 7 divided by x plus 4, x minus 1. Now you see what I've done here. You might think I've got the sign wrong for this 3x plus 7. But because I put a minus sign in there, it's minus 3x minus plus 7, which is minus 7. If I'd have put a minus and left the minus here as well, that minus and minus 7 would then change to plus 7. So that would be no good for us. And I've also factored the denominator x squared plus 3x minus 4, which factors accordingly x plus 4, x minus 1. So now we're ready for partial fractions. So now all we're going to partial, we're going to put aside the 3x plus 2. The 3x plus 7 over x plus 4, x minus 1, this is what we're interested in now. So we need to find our original coefficients. So when we multiply everything out, this is what we come to. So I'll put in uh, A and B as my main variables here. Good to use capital letters and in alphabetical order. 
So the first one would be a divided by x plus 4, which accounts for this one, and this one is for b of x minus 1. So if you're trying to work this out, what a over x plus 4 plus b over x minus 1, with a common denominator, your x plus 4 will multiply by the b, and your x minus 1 will multiply by the a. And then that would give us minus 3x minus 7 equals a times x minus 1 and b times x plus 4. And then this x plus 4, x minus 1 would then cancel out. So we've got minus 3x minus 7 equals a times ax minus 1 plus b times x plus 4. So multiply out the a with the x minus 1 and b with the x plus 4. We get the following. Uh, x times a and x times b. So we just do x times a plus b, get the x on its own. And then the simple um, units, we've got the a times minus 1 and the b times plus 4. So we get minus 1a plus 4b. So now put those into some sort of simultaneous equation situation so we can solve for what these coefficients are. So a plus b equals minus 3. Now the reason we get to that is because what we want to do is this x value here we know is going to come to minus 3. So whatever this a and b is would be minus 3 because we want these to be equal the same amount. So a plus b is minus 3 and minus 1a plus 4b will come to minus 7. So you can, you can have a few guesses if you wanted. It would take quite a long time in some cases. So just to set up a simultaneous equation a plus b equals minus 3 and minus a plus 4b equals minus 7. So we can see a minus a is 0. So what we can do is we can just add them together. So a minus a is 0. b plus 4b is 5b. Minus 3 plus minus 7 is minus 10. So that's now given us 5b equals minus 10, which we can just solve for b. It's minus 2. Pretty straightforward. And as we got the b, what we can do is we can plug it into our first um, equation, a plus b equals minus 3. That seems the easiest to work with with b equal to minus 2, so instead of a plus b equals minus 3, we've got a minus 2 equals minus 3, so therefore a equals minus 1. So there we go, so we've got our partial fractions uh, values for a and b. So here when we set this up here, what we can do is we can now display what we've got. So minus 3x minus 7 divided by x plus 4x minus 1 equals minus 1 divided by x plus 4, that's our a value, and then minus 2 divided by x minus 1. Now I've got the minus 2 here for the b, so what I did was I changed this plus to a minus and then put a plus 2 in there. It's easy to deal with. So 2 divided by x minus 1. So you see here when we set it up, we always put plus signs. So I'll put a plus b there. So a plus uh, b, which is a minus 2, I could put a minus and then leave the plus 2 on the top there. So therefore we've solved that 3x cubed plus 11x squared minus 9x minus 15 divided by x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 3x plus 2 minus 1 divided by x plus 4 minus 2 divided by x minus 1. So now the best use for partial fraction expansion is when you do an integration. So to integrate this thing here, this equation here, that would be really difficult. Whereas if you want to integrate this bit and they're both of the same value, this would be pretty straightforward. 3x integrate that, integrate the 2, integrate minus 1 over x plus 4, some sort of logarithm. And same here, minus 2, x minus 1, again, some sort of logarithm. Okay, so that's all good. So now I'm going to show you how that's programmed into LaTeX. So let's bring the page back up to the top. Okay, so here we go. There's all the stuff. So I've got some packages here. So the main important packages here for the mathematics part of it is the package AMS math, AMS symbols, X fraction, gen symbol, and polynomial or polynom. This one here, polynom, is really, really important. That's uh, the one that will show you how to use the polynomial long division straight into LaTeX. It'll even work it out for you. So I'll show you how to use that in a minute. There's a few other packages here which I like, which is last page, big ints, so that's when you're using integration, because this question is going to do integration later. And Stack Engine is also a good package. So I've set the page up. Uh, you'll see one of my other YouTube videos which shows how I've uh, and why I've got all this in there. So I begin document. So I just type in there in words find partial fraction expansion of 
So begin the mathematical type here. I've got the dollar sign and I've typed in my question. So C frac, that's a, that's a good function there. You then have to have brackets to have your numerator and then brackets curly braces for your denominator. And that's the dollar sign again to end. So whenever you're doing your LaTeX programming, you need to have um, for fractions, you need curly braces each side. So if you go there, see where I click onto it, see where it highlights the corresponding bracket. So that one there will flip the first curly bracket there, you see. So and that's what we've got here. So that's basically what I've typed in there to get to this situation. OK, so to do polynomial long division, numerator high degree, I'll just type that in. And the double backslash, that's just to start a new line. And then here you see where I've used the poly long division. So basically I've just typed that in as if it's a fraction, just like it is up here. But poly long division rather than C frac. And this poly long division, basically that on its own will solve the polynomial long division for you. So I'll just show you that there. So to get to that, look, all I've done is typed in, in the LaTeX into the text works this right in here and the output on the PDF has given me all of this so that's a really useful tool that one that's really helpful and then basically I've just gone through typed in got all the uh, presentation for my solution and you'll see there what I've typed so I'll just go down the page there so again the CFRAC function that's very good for the displaying your fractions so here we go again, C frac, that just gives you a large fraction. There's also S frac, which is not wouldn't be quite as good in this situation. That'd be one for you to try. And then another good function here is begin a line. So let's just uh, slide down the page a little bit. So you see here, I've got begin a line with curly braces and a star or asterisk. So basically what happens is when you use the begin a line, You've got this ampersand sign. I've got one on that line. See, I've got one on this line, which is here. I've got one on this line, which is here. One here. And then one here. One here. And then one here. And you'll notice that all this writing here corresponds to my calculations for the simultaneous equation and then end a line. And what that does is it lines up all the parts of each line with the ampersand. So they're all in a nice line. So here the equal signs are just before the ampersand. And it is on here as well. So if you notice there now where I go to simultaneous equation, all the equal signs are in a nice line. Which is really nice to present it. Otherwise they'd be all staggered everywhere. They look a bit of a mess. Really difficult to read. You notice here as well I've got a little line underlining so as if you was writing a fraction uh, or a calculation sorry your a minus a and you want to get your solution on the bottom to draw a nice little underline in there that's a nice little way of just presenting the underline so basically I put backslash underline and then curly braces type what I want to underline and because I wanted to the ampersand to keep the thing spaced out nicely I've gone out of the underline done the ampersand and then gone back into the underline and underline for the minus seven so you'll see what's happened there so the equal sign there would stay in the same place and then that's everything else is in there and then here the last bit where I've displayed the solution I started up with with the mathematical um, straight brackets uh, or square brackets and then I've written hence inside there so to get that a backslash text and then in the curly braces, I've written hence. Otherwise, the hence would come out in slightly different writing. And I've done the display my uh, result in there in the usual fa uh, fashion using CFRAC. So if you have a look there, hence, that's in nice writing, same as this, uh, you know, same sort of font as that one. Whereas if I was to take that out of there and just leave it like that. This is what we would get. So let's just run that by. See what happens to it. So you now it's in um, not such nice writing and it's closer to the solution. So we put that back in. 
Clearly braces. And then text. And there we go. Put a little bit of space each side. It's nice to keep a bit of space between. Run the text works. And then we're back to normal. So there we go. So thanks very much for watching. And uh, please uh, leave any messages underneath. And please always remember to subscribe. Okay. Thanks very much for watching. Watching.